So I think it's pretty clear to everybody that the popularity of Miraculous has been on a bit of a decline in the last year or so. A couple of years ago, 2020, 2021, it was huge. Lots of engagement, lots of discussion, lots to talk about, but then... Well, then came a lot of questionable writing decisions, or at least writing decisions that a lot of the fan base did not seem to find very inspiring or interesting or really good at all. And I think that slowly but surely, we've seen a bit of a drop off in the show's overall popularity as a result of this. But like, let's be real, it is quite rare for a show to suddenly dip in popularity for no reason at all. There is generally a cause. And since the show was super popular, even with a wacky out of order and inconsistent release schedule, with premieres scattered across various different channels and languages, the only real reason you can point to for this drop off has got to be the lack of satisfaction with the writing overall. And this season especially, I've seen a whole lot more discussion about how people are simply dropping the show because they no longer enjoy watching it, because the writing sucks. And so, I guess that's what today's video is going to explore. Are Astrid and Co killing the show? Are they killing the fandom? Killing the hype with their poor creative decisions? Spoiler alert, I think the answer is yes. And so, I suppose we really do need to chase this rabbit hole all the way down. Because there are truly a lot of factors going into this. A lot of poor decisions that are adding up to create this mass exodus. Now, there's a lot of problems I could poke at with my metaphorical stick and hold up as examples of bad writing, but I think the biggest one, well, maybe not the biggest, but one of the most obvious examples, is bad narrative pacing. My god, the story is slow and plodding, and not much really happens episode to episode. Or indeed, within a whole season. And this was especially clear in seasons 1 to 3. Apart from a handful of episodes, the narrative was completely stagnant. Gabe never even came close to achieving his goals, Marinette and Adrian never got any closer to starting a romantic relationship, and Ladybug and Cat Noir never even got close to taking down Hawk Moth. It was all a monster of the week type of deal, where at the end of the episode it sort of reverses things for the next episode, and you play fast and loose with canon. Pretty much like The Simpsons, where the world just resets after the end of an episode. And that's fine in theory. You know, it works for a lot of shows, but the problem is that this show is trying to hold itself up as a show that has a big overarching narrative. You can't tell me it's reasonable to have the first three seasons be such a drag, because look at so many other classic animated shows. Avatar, Gravity Falls, Our House. But my god, especially Avatar The Last Airbender. They're able to tell their stories in a concise fashion and earn a bunch of critical acclaim. Miraculous though, it's really only picked up the pace in the last two seasons, seasons four and five. Whilst in hindsight, the key episodes from season one through three really should have just been smushed together into a single season. Simply put, the show has been way too slow to reach this point that it's at now. But even then, I don't think that really mattered all that much to people at first. People enjoyed the characters and the world, and so they could look past how slow things were progressing. But then, from what I've seen, from what I've seen of people saying at least, people have looked at those leaks. You know the ones, the big leaks, and I'm not going to spoil anything because, you know, that's a good way to get in trouble. But it's very clear that a lot of people did go looking for them after they were released onto social media. And yeah, I think a lot of people have looked at how a bunch of key arcs have ended and said, ah, uh, no thanks. What the hell? We're waiting all this time for a story to end in such an unsatisfying way? No thanks, I'm out. And so, it doesn't even seem to be the slow pacing, although that is pretty terrible. But people were able to work their way through the dark days of the show. But it's more there's going to be no payoff for all this faith. And so, you've had a terribly paced show, and then you betrayed at the end with a terrible ending. In the fans' eyes, it's going to end badly. And after all that time that they're dedicated to watching the show, it feels like a bit of a slap in the face. And yeah, it makes it hard to want to watch the final season regardless of its quality. Because, well yeah, if you know ahead of time that something is going to suck, usually you want to avoid it, right? It's basic self-preservation. And that's kind of what we're seeing right now. People fleeing the proverbial sinking ship. And I think that's probably the overall biggest contributing factor to the show's waning prominence. But that's not the only thing. It's not the only factor. A lot of the writing decisions in general have been interesting to say the least. Let's start with the OG, Chloe and the failed redemption arc. This is the granddaddy of all aborted storylines. Let's set the scene and prepare to get everybody triggered as they remember this terrible storyline, shall we? Okay, so during season two, we started to see a bunch of temporary miraculouses get handed out to various different characters. Oh, you got the fox, Nino the turtle, Chloe the bee. We start to see a shift in her personality slightly. Don't get me wrong, she's still very rude and tempestuous, but it's clear that she is trying to be slightly better to live up to the ideals of her idol, Ladybug. She's still a major brat, but once you meet her mom and you see the dynamic she has with her dad, it becomes a yikes moment. It all falls into place and you think, ooh. Jesus, that's why she sucks. They were trying to show why she was so awful. 
She's doing a slow burn redemption. And it was actually going quite well. She'd have missteps, she'd make mistakes, but under Ladybug's guidance, she was trying to improve. Until, after Ladybug refuses to give her the bee anymore, as Hawkmoth knows who she is, which shouldn't even really matter anyway, as it's not like she gets to keep the Miraculous afterwards, and Marinette keeps giving Miraculouses to her friends after Miracle Queen anyway. But, yeah, okay. Chloe then decides that she'd be better off joining up with Hawkmoth and Mayura, betraying the heroes and becoming Miracle Queen. And this leads to the departure of Fu as the Guardian, and marks both the end of her redemption arc, but also the point of no return for her character to have any sort of redeemable quality. She completely reverts in every way, and in future seasons, becomes far worse. And then in flashbacks, like with Marinette and Kim's date, it's revealed that she's always been a complete monster. And yet, people didn't take this well. People don't like having their time wasted to get to know a character, only for it all to be snatched away. Go figure! I think also what made it worse was that ultimately it meant nothing. So you toss all that storyline out of the window, and you just have her completely revert to what she was before. If they were going to have her redemption fail, I think it should have been done in a way that pushed the storyline forwards. Pushed the storyline forwards in a way that allowed the character to evolve and grow. For instance, if they were going to write the storyline, Surely it would have made more sense for her to have a more Lila role going forward, you know, more in league with Gabe, and working on her own agenda. Instead, she just goes back to being a boring mean girl with no nuance at all. They have the Zoe story, but that really feels like it was made solely to replace Chloe with a character that has almost her exact backstory, just nice. And in the end, it just feels like Astrid has a hate boner for Chloe. And having seen some of his social media presence, whoo -hoo 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 -hoo, I feel like that's really not far from the truth of the matter. And so her character gets tossed in the trash, and the fandom learned that the writing team would prefer to keep the status quo instead of pushing the story forward in any meaningful way. And you see this again with the alternate romantic ship arcs. They introduce these two new characters that are meant to compete with the main ship of Adrian and Marinette, and they do a storyline at the end of Season 3 where it seems like they're going to test the waters. Maybe Season 4 is going to be a season of romantic drama as our alt ship sets sail and inevitably flounder at sea, only for both of them to sink in the first two episodes and make you think, what? And then everything about the Cat Noir and Ladybug slash Adrian Marinette dynamic reverts to exactly how it was before that all started, which, yeah. It's just another example of things getting stuck in holding patterns, maintaining the status quo, not being brave enough to push forward, and not showing any sort of risk taking with storylines. It's just safe conservative writing, which, yeah, it's just not gripping. It is not gripping and it gets boring. I'm not saying that those pairs had to be the end game, of course not, that'd be ridiculous. But they would have injected a new vibe and dynamic into the show for season 4. But then they just end up getting wasted right from the get go. And then after the romance ends, they just continue to be wasted. They keep Kagami around as the scorned ex-girlfriend, who doesn't get much development beyond just being there. And now it looks like she's getting shuffled off over to Felix, who is just Adrian, but less nice. And then Luca, well, they set Luca up to have something really interesting. He finds out both Adrian and Marinette are Cat Noir and Ladybug, respectively. But then nothing ever happens with that storyline, and we shuffle Luca off into obscurity as he goes on a world trip with his dad to keep everyone safe. And this is without his knowledge having any real use or purpose at all beyond building Marinette up in one episode. So basically it feels like an excuse to get him out of the way. And there are other story threads like this, but I'd say that these are the major ones. And ultimately, I think these are the major problems. The storyline just kind of sucks. They've held on to certain things way too long, and now they're starting to finish up, and people are not impressed. The writing's just so mediocre for a show of this popularity level. The pacing's terrible. The payoffs seem like they're not going to be worth it. The writing in general is poor. And the decisions that they've made in many instances are just baffling. And so after all these years, with all these problems never really being addressed at all, is it any real wonder that the show seems to be fading away? That its popularity is waning? I don't think so. And whilst it is a bit of a shame to see, at the same time, you can't help but feel that they've brought it on themselves with consistently poor writing choices. <sighs> and so yeah, there's not really much else to say. So I think I'll end the video there. But of course, I would like your opinions on this. What do you think of the quality of the writing of Miraculous? Do you think I'm on the money here? Have you noticed a significant dip in popularity because of the writing? Or maybe you think I'm completely wrong. I'm quite curious to hear what you have to say, so make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and let me know.